Hello everybody and welcome back to the Spoked Wheel YouTube channel. We're back today with a video that's going to be a little bit different from what we've had in the past. This is not the latest installment of the Andy Schleck Pro Cyclist mode, uh, although that will be coming soon enough. Um, today I'm going to try a little Pro Cycling Manager challenge. I might try and do a couple more of these in the future, but the one today is a test to see whether or not I can win the UCI Road World Championships with the lowest ranked nation in the game. So as you can see, I have the teams uh, sorted based on rating, and Ukraine is the lowest ranked team at the World Championships with a rating of two stars. Um, our best rider, our main man here is Mark Padun. Uh, in 2020, he rode for Bahrain McLaren, World Tour team. Um, and he's gonna be he's gonna be the the guy we're going with. If it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen with Mark Padun because he has the best best attributes out of any of the Ukraine riders in this game. Um, I have picked the course that we're gonna do uh, pretty strategically. Um, if we were to do a course with a ton of climbing something like the Imola course or the Japan Olympics course, we'd have absolutely no chance of sticking with the top guys in the mountains. But at the same time, if we picked a course that was too flat, like the one in Doha a few years back, we would just get blown out of the water by the sprinters. So I've gone with the 2019 course, the Leeds Harrogate event in the UK. Um, I think that is the best mix of it's hilly enough where it's not going to be a pure sprinter who wins it, but it's not so hilly that someone like Mark Padoon with 72 hills and 73 mountains. Essentially, I'm hoping he'll still have a chance over the terrain. Um, so I honestly have no idea how this is going to go. I think it's going to be pretty difficult to get a win with Mark Padoon at this race. I might end up switching the course at some point if... It's obviously not working, um, but we'll just have to see. I think this is going to be a fun challenge. The one thing that I did want to point out is a feature that I'd like to see in future games. Um, it would be really cool if riders outside of these countries could participate in the world championships. Like The example that comes to mind would be Andre Amador, who is a very strong rider, uh, from Costa Rica, so he doesn't get to play at the World Championships in this game. So it would be pretty cool if they added a feature where maybe you can keep these countries, but perhaps if there's a rider outside of these countries who has a rating of over 75 or something like that, they get to participate as well. Because one of my favorite things about the World Championships in real life is seeing all the different jerseys and riders from as many different countries as possible. So that's one thing that kind of you miss out on when it's just a set number of teams participating in the race but uh without further ado we're gonna we're gonna get right into this i'm anticipating having to play play this race through a bunch of times so i'm gonna gonna try and edit things up a bunch and show as many relevant clips as i can without making it too long fingers crossed that hopefully we can get a win at some point but there's only one way to find out So we're on take number one here. Our guy Mark is actually in a very strong position with 16 and a half kilometers to go. I'm realizing now that I'm not entirely sure if it's pronounced Padun or Padun. I'm gonna go with Padun, hopefully that's right. Um, but our teammate here, Kulik, has done a nice job of protecting Mark. Um, we got basically one last steep little rise there in the final few kilometers, which is probably gonna be our, our best shot at a launching pad to get away. Uh, the field is pretty sizable. In real life, it's split up quite a bit more than this um, at this point in the race. Of course, Mads Pedersen won the World Championships on this course. Uh, this is a big group, still 85 riders. Um, 
So it's going to be more of a, at this point, it looks like it's going to be more of a contested sprint than I thought it would be. Um, but we're going to try. We're going to try and attack here. And we've got a few guys following us. Not really. We didn't get much of a gap. Inside of five kilometers. Let's sit on Mad Pedersen's wheel here if we can. Kind of out of energy. Trentine and Pedersen were two guys who competed for the win in real life, so this is shaping up pretty similarly, actually. And they're getting away with Sagan as well. You just can't stay on their wheel. Um, yeah, okay. So definitely more of a, a sprint finish than I anticipated, although the fact that we were able to stay... Um, with those guys until really the very end gives me a, a little bit of hope um i think it went decently well for the first attempt all things considered to get 16th with mark padan um i checked the the results in real life uh at this 2019 event the ukraine only had one single rider it was mark padan he did not start on the day so we have no sort of uh baseline to compare ourselves to but i'm i'm honestly pretty happy with 16th in our first attempt i think there's some evidence there that it, we could if we could get in a group that gets away over the top of that last little climb we could have a chance here so that gives me hope we are on take three right now mark padun has a race day condition of plus three so this is a very good opportunity i think the best opportunity we've had so far um in particular that plus eight to stamina is going to be really important at the finish uh for a race like this one that's well over 200 kilometers long um so i have my my team lined up to put mark in a decent position i'm going to try once again to launch him over that final climb of the day um yeah i mean it's tough with him at a zero race to condition to try and compete in this just because the attributes aren't quite there. But on a day like today, when you got plus four to the hills, like I said, plus eight to stamina, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen on a day like this where he has a solid race day condition. So this is a good chance. We're going to do our best to capitalize on it. We got Kononenko on the front right now for our little Ukrainian train here. He's getting close to running out of energy, so we're going to have him pull off eventually. And actually, Prevar and Kalik are also um, essentially out of energy. So you can, you can hang tight. We'll have you follow Kononenko instead. give you the energy gel it's just about trying to keep padun in the best possible position ahead of the climb uh, i think in previous attempts i was starting him a little bit a little bit too far back of course now that i say that uh unfortunately <laughs> all my teammates are completely out of energy um so, Mark is once again on his own, which that's the, that's the main thing, uh, the main issue with this sort of challenge. Uh, if I had a team of four guys who were as strong as Mark Padun, it would be a lot easier, but the problem is... Ukraine is ranked lowest because uh, they don't have four guys as good as Mark Padon. Um, but 
we're in a in a decent spot right here. Let's see if we can't try and go with that. Apparently we can't, but. They're not really going too, too hard just yet. I mean, we're in the best position that we've been in so far with 10 kilometers to go. If we can stick on Arno Demar's wheel and then try and launch up this climb, that's our best bet, I think. And we've got Philippe just absolutely drilling it. There's a move that we need to respond to. weren't quite able to do so. Let's see, Alf leaps out of energy. We're going on the attack. We got four guys with us. Now it's back to 25. I mean, there's no way we can out sprint this group of riders, unfortunately. Just gonna have to try and get the jump on them around the corner. Well, it was close, but. Just didn't get the gap that we needed on that climb in order to hold them off in the sprint, but 11th is our best so far. Good effort, Mark. We'll keep on trying. Okay, so for this my sixth attempt at this, I switched things up a little bit. I'm riding the 2015 Richmond Worlds course, um, and so far what I've noticed is that the last five kilometers in particular are incredibly narrow. We're on them right now. Um, theoretically, that could benefit um, one escapee or a small group of riders that get away. Um, as you can see, I'm out of energy and out of contention to win this one at the moment. Uh, the problem I don't actually think was my energy. It was more positioning. I dropped back to try and get a water bottle because all my teammates were had been dropped and I had no water and uh, there was a split and I just couldn't get back onto the front group. Uh, so I wasted all my energy chasing essentially. But I think that if I can make sure my positioning is good and I can stay right up at the front for the whole race, I think that I might have a better chance to win this one than um, the Harrogate course, which ended up being much more of a sprinter's race. Um, basically, I think the potential to try and get away and get a gap on the field is higher on this course because of the, the steeper hills. The hills aren't that long, but they they are steeper. And then also the narrow roads uh, would be good for. Um, they'd be worse for chasing on, so they would benefit me if I could potentially get away. Um, so I think I'm going to try this course a few more times. Obviously not going to win this one, but in my opinion, I think it's more likely. I want to. It might not be more likely, but I want to at least try and get to a finale in contention, and then I'll be able to see whether or not I think it's more likely that I can win on this course or the other one. Hi everyone. If I sound a little bit different now, it's because I'm doing a voiceover after the fact, and the reason for that is my recordings had a little bit of an issue from this point on. So unfortunately, after that first race on the Richmond course. None of my recordings have any audio from my mic. And additionally, the last recording session I did for this video just completely didn't save at all. Um, I'm not entirely sure why that was. My best guess would be that I accidentally set the input to something other than my mic, but even so, I'm not sure why 
that final session didn't save. Uh, I'm definitely going to look into it before I record my next video to hopefully prevent it from happening again. Um, but basically to sum up what happened, uh, my Richmond experiment ended very quickly. I realized there was no way that I could stay in contention with Mark Padun over the cobblestones. So I switched to the 2017 course in Norway in Bergen. And as you can see, it's a pretty hilly course, um, hillier than Harrogate, also slightly shorter. And I found that it allowed Mark Padun to stay in contention a lot better than the Harrogate course. Um, in hindsight, I probably should have used this course from the get-go because I think it's probably the best suited to Mark Padun out of all the courses. Um, so we're approaching this final climb here. Basically my strategy was to try and stay in contention, stay towards the front, and then use that last climb as a launching pad to attack up over the top and hopefully get a gap. Um, the finish of the climb was still about 10 kilometers or so from the finish, so it was a little too long to hold off the whole field just by getting a gap over the top, but it was a good platform to try and essentially form a race winning split. So that's what I did here in this race. Um, I stayed up at the front as we hit the slopes of the climb. Um, the peloton was being led by France and Italy. Uh, they were both pretty present throughout all my playthroughs on this course. Um, but around this left hand turn, the climb sort of got more serious and it's, it was at that point that I tried to come to the front and make my move. As you can see this time around, um, Matteo Trentin from Italy, Matthew van der Poel from the Netherlands, uh, and also Philippe Gilbert from Belgium all were able to respond to my attack, and we formed a group of four up over the top of the climb. Uh, so, like I said, 10 kilometers still to go in the race. It's a long distance for a group of four to stick things out and hold off the chasing field. So I was just kind of sitting there on the back, wondering whether or not things would come back together. Um, and although we had a decent gap of up over 20 seconds for a little bit, things did start to come back together here with about seven and a half kilometers to go. Uh, the Danish team with Casper Askreen on the front of the peloton or the second group on the road, whatever you want to call it, was able to bring things back together. And I thought that that would be a good time to try and attack again and see if I could get a gap. And to my surprise, for kind of the first time in this playthrough or this video, I did get a gap immediately. And it was as high as 30 seconds uh, very soon after I attacked. Even with three kilometers to go, it was still up over 30 seconds. And I was starting to believe that perhaps this could be the time that we finally got the win with Mark Padun. Um, as you can see, I'm out of energy, unfortunately. Uh, I just didn't quite have enough, but even so, with one and a half kilometers, the gap was still over 30 seconds. I took this right-hand turn into the final kilometer, the final straight. I looked back to see where the field was, and they just blew right past me in maybe the last 50 meters or so to steal away the win. It was quite a heartbreaker. Um, I wish that I could have shown you my real-time reaction because of how exciting the finish was. Uh, but in the end, this was the closest I came to getting the win. So I guess the answer to the question, can I win the world championships with the lowest ranked nation, for now at least, is no. Um, I had a lot of fun recording this one, and I might want to revisit, in the, revisit it in the future. Uh, I definitely want to do more challenges or experiments in Pro Cycling Manager. If you have any suggestions for challenges you'd like to see, feel free to leave a comment and let me know. Um, I did record a few more attempts at this, but I didn't get any closer than this, and with the audio I think it's just not worth showing it. So I'm going to end the video here. Um, I'll be back soon with more Andy Schleck playthrough um, and potentially a few more of these challenges in the future. So sorry about the recording issues again, but I hope you all enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching.